okay <clears throat> and um, their indications and so we will just continue from where we stopped yesterday and i think it, if you are talking about this composition am i right and so screen is not shared yet oh i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry just a second please <clears throat> yes is it, is it this composition Yes, sir. So, uh, Zishan, if you can just explain, uh, like, uh, what, uh, what, what what were they asking? Uh, they were just asking that what are the components of an Ormus line and what are the components of Ringer lactate? Mm -hmm. And uh, how much is the, uh, the quantity of electrolytes in each of them? Each of those. Okay, because actually, if you, uh, the basic difference is that <clears throat> in normal saline, there are there is uh, there is too much sodium okay so uh, if, if you can explain because this is a concept with even i don't have very good concept uh, to explain in a way maybe maybe someone can explain in better way than me uh, what is difference between this osmolarity osmolality and tonicity because uh, it is isosmotic but hypertonic am i right yes sir sodium chloride so how can you explain it we can hyper uh, this uh, osmolality uh, actually i just myself uh, just found because uh, sometimes when we are in the clinical practice we are not reading uh, these things we just take it for granted okay so uh, i think this is uh, yeah, yesterday we, we were just discussing about the fluid uh, dynamics, uh, fluid, how fluid is distributed, how much is in the, in the intravascular component and how much it is in the uh, extra vas vascular component. So that's what this was also confusing a little bit. What do you mean by this transcellular fluid? Because uh, a two third is in the um, intracellular, okay, and one third is in the extracellular. So the, in out of that, this uh, I, intravascular and interstitial. So what is what is this transcellular? I think it should be. So isn't this yes. lymphatic? Uh, maybe I was not able to. Uh, I did not read it actually here. But I think it is. It is also interstitial. Am I right? And just let me see. The professor is saying that in the joints, fluid in the joints, fluid in the joints and cavities okay one part comprises which is made of intraocular fluid cerebrospinal yes you see uh, intraocular fluid cerebrospinal fluid urine in the bladder and fluid with within the lumen of the bowel so this is a transcellular fluid you see that's how we learn every day and basic concepts sometimes slip out of here all of us have read in our medical college but when when we become big doctors we forget the basic things yeah. anyways uh, so the concept of solute solvents solutions because that will be uh, difference between osmolarity and osmolality okay so um, both of them are related to osmols okay the osmotic uh, uh, solute part solute particle and was one is in the form of volume and one is in the form of weight, okay? And actually this concept just now, I was just have a, having a look at it because uh, just I was reading about it. So you see, this is that osmolality uh, is more important if, when we are ex, ex, uh, explaining it because you see the main difference being when temperature changes, volume changes, volume will change, but mass will remain the same, okay? So under most physiological conditions, temperature is fairly constant and the two are very similar. However, small osmolality is the preferred term. Okay. So this is uh, um, another thing. Then when we say one mole, one mole is uh, uh, about the, uh, not the mass. It is the number of molecules. Okay. Equivalent to Avogadro's numbers. Uh, what is that? 6.02 into 10 raised power 23. Am I right? It is. Uh, it is that Avogadro's number, which we studied in, med, uh, in, in school, high, high, high school. Anyways, so this is another important concept that ionic compounds associate, okay? 
and they will be considered as separate like there is sodium and chloride so if we are describing the osmolality we will be describing as two osmol per kg because one will be sodium and one will be chloride but when we are describing non ionic compounds like glucose so it will be one osmol per kg okay so this is another thing and it is possible to estimate the osmolality of plasma by summing up the major plasma solute so we usually we are dealing with sodium potassium uh, this is a formula 2 into sodium plus potassium because usually potassium is so sometimes we ignore potassium and only sodium we count okay so uh, this is how we calculate the and as ishan there is a concept of one uh, calculated and one measured so measured is through you know, in the laboratory am i right oh, not sure about it sir so, yes. so one uh, osmolality is measured and then we calculate this is the calculated one okay and what is the concept of this tonicity tonicity is between two uh like uh, two uh, you can say that uh, two two different cavities separated by a semi permeable membrane okay so that's actually that is a more important concept with reference to cellular edema with reference to for example this brain edema so tonicity is a concept because for example if something is hypertonic it will draw you see contain the higher concentration of solute on si one side of the membrane so what will happen that it will drain out water from the other side so for example if we are giving hypertonic that's why when cerebral edema occurs we are giving hypertonic solutions so which will pull out the uh, so this is related to osmosis right no no it is not related to osmosis osmosis is separate Op osmosis is movement of water the mm. the membrane is described as selective permeable it allows free passage of water okay yes yes you are right of oh, oh, uh, occurring the thing which will uh, will be moving the water but it is because of the uh, tonicity that water will do if i am not wrong just please if anyone has because i i before i started i said that i have very weak concept i understand yes, but osmosis i am very clear about it in osmosis you see we have a semi permeable membrane mm. we have two solutions in mm. both there is a solvent and a solute mm. wherever the solute concentration is more the solvent will move from the lower solution concentration to the higher solute concentration yes so that is the water movement am i right this is a passive movement of water from a dilute to a more concentrated solution across a semi permeable membrane okay so the tonicity is that tonicity is a way of describing the relevant relevant actually it is the same thing okay relative solute concentration of two solutions which are separated by a selectively permeable membrane okay semi permeable for example intracellular and extracellular so that's why when there is cerebral edema there is more fluid inside the cells so that's why we give hypertonic saline or uh, mannitol because what will happen it will uh, drag the water from the cells in in the uh, extra uh, cellular component in the vessels and it will pull out from the body okay so that is the concept of uh, when we uh, when we use uh, these these solutions okay so uh, from uh, from this it allows th that there are two key determinants of tonicity the solute particles and the properties of the membrane involved okay strictly speaking tonicity should always be described with reference of a particular membrane the cell membrane okay so uh, because the, this is this concept is also there i think in the uh, blood brain barrier am i right because not everything will be permeable through through that membrane okay because in clinical uh, practice the tonicity of fluid as minus is described relative to the tonicity of internal environment of the rbc and with reference to the rbc membrane because if you are 
दिस इज बिकॉज एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ हाइपोटोनिक और हाइपोटोनिक सोल्यूशन इंटरवीनियसली विल लीड टू वॉटर मूवमेंट इन टू और आउट ऑफ द रेड सेल्स कॉजिंग डैमेज टू द सेल्स so this concept was important you see uh, for example there will be more osmoles here semi selective semi uh, semi permeable membrane and then it will be redistributed uh, because of water movement okay so what has happened here uh, if we put this if there is a more tonicity hypotonicity tonic in this side and hypotonic in that side so after some time water will move to the other side yes yes sir this is right yes so it will become isotonic okay so how does water move between fluid compartments The intravascular, interstitial, and intracellular fluid compartments are separated from each other by selective permeable membranes. Uh, this concept is there in in the lungs as well, or what? How furosemide is being used to treat pulmonary edema? What happens? Yes, sir. It is the same same mechanism. Yes, sir. Because the capillaries they are semi permeable, mm -hmm. so they will. Uh, the fluid will move into the capillaries and through the blood into kidneys because the other blood. concept is of the capillary this dynamics there is one on cortic pressure and one is uh, sorry osmosis on cortic pressure is also the same as tonicity or the osmosis one yes uh, because on cortic pressure is the one which is uh, creating the this uh, thing which is keeping keeping the fluid inside the the vessels okay so we discussed some of uh, these things yesterday uh, how much is the fluids and just a second these things actually we discussed yesterday and this question was asked to you zishan the composition and uh, of daily volumes this is with reference to no, sir, only for the it was last uh, attempt of tokes in tokes in the last attempt actually this question and, was asked to me okay body body fluids and with reference to intestinal obstruction because uh, when there will be intestinal obstruction these much this much fluid will be lost okay which is normally actually absorbed by the large intestine okay so you should be knowing this is this is a question may be asked in the mcqs as well so you should be knowing about it okay okay actually yesterday we were uh, just a nice diagram is also available in problem oriented about these fluids yes yes the one yes. you were mentioning yes so actually uh, this uh, we were discussing about this uh, uh, guidelines for intravascular fluid for surgical patient so we had discussed up till here just give me a second please just okay uh, so <clears throat> when the diagnosis of hypovolemia is in doubt the central when we actually we were uh, they were just uh, giving some recommendation which we should be following in uh, when we are dealing with the uh, intravascular uh, this uh, intravenous fluid management okay uh, so better we just finish it uh, when the diagnosis of hypovolemia is in doubt the central venous pressure is not and the central venous pressure is not raised the response to a bolus infusion of 200 ml of a suitable colloid or crystalloid should be tested the response Uh, should be assessed using the patient's cardiac output and stroke uh, volume measurement by flow based these are the dynamic uh, and uh, static parameters which we use alternative the clinical response may be monitored by the uh, measurement estimation of pulse capillary refill uh, cvp okay mm, okay 
then patients undergoing some form of orthopedic abdominal surgery, intraoperative uh, treatment with uh, intravenous fluid to achieve an abdominal value of stroke volume should be used where possible, as this may reduce postoperative complications rate and duration of hospital stay, because this will be related to the perfusion. Okay, if the cardiac output is maintained, there is good perfusion, so it will leading to uh, less postoperative complication, not only surgical. But anesthetic, as I told you, that if patient is hypovolemic, there will be more chances of uh, postoperative nausea vomiting. Okay. The same thing they have told here. Postoperative fluid and nutritional management. Mm. Patient should be in positive balance or no? No, sir. You volumic. You volumic. Okay, so hemodynamic and fluid status of these those patients who fail to excrete their uh, perioperative sodium load and especially whose urine concentration is less than 20 millimoles should be reviewed. They are, they are suggesting in patients requiring continuing IV maintenance fluid, there should be sodium poor and, and of low enough uh, volume until the uh, patient has returned their sodium and fluid balance over the perioperative period to zero. What does it mean? I don't understand. When this has been achieved, the IV fluid volume and content should be those required for uh, daily maintenance. Just tell me one thing. During stress, what is the effect on water and salt retention? Is it increased or decreased? Increased. I think that, that's what they are telling. Okay, Bilal Tufel is here, I think. Bilal Tufel is here. Yes, Bilal, welcome. Bilal, are you here? He is among the participants. Maybe. Hello? Yes, Bilal. Uh, Yes, since you are here, if you can take a few minutes um, regarding this fluid management, some few words from you. Nishan, uh, if you are continuing, okay. give me like 10 minutes, then okay. I can tell something. I am with you guys. Okay. Just a second, please. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so um, uh, you, the basically, basically difference between the, uh, you know, I want to ask you something. How many of people uh, use a normal saline versus ringer lactate? And what is in your mind when you are using normal saline rather than ringer lactate? There are only a few indications for normal saline now. Mm -hmm. Mostly we have to use, uh, like for fluid replacement, we have to use ringer lactate because this is more uh, iso, iso, what will be called, like a homeostasis kind of. Food. Is it isotonic or isotonic? No, it's uh, isotonic. Isotonic. Isotonic, but it is hyper. Ringer is isotonic. What will be the effect of more one uh, like one fifty four than so uh, physiological? Actually, oh, this will have hypernatremia and hypochloremia. Yes, Zunera. Sir, it's the most uh, most near to the physiological uh, concentration. That's why it's uh, more preferred. And uh, no. Normal saline is not. Uh, no, the ringer lactate I am talking about. Yes, yes, about. yes, yes, yes. Sorry, I thought you are talking normal saline. The same as plasma. That's why. <clears throat> okay, because there are number uh, more osmoles. 
so it is hyper osmotic but isotonic okay so uh, this is uh, because these solutions are not available in i think most part of they they have told uh, too much details about it just a second we discuss about this holiday cigar crystalloids how many how many uh, uh, of you have you have used this albumin what do you never so we use uh, albumin 5% albumin and what are the problems associated with dextran anaphylactic reaction anaphylactic can occur with the he is sterile as well it it is causing coagulopathy because it is uh, inhibiting platelet aggregation okay so actually therapeutically dextran is being used after grafts okay yeah. after uh, after grafts dextran is being used to improve the microcirculation like uh, free flaps they use it you see prophylaxis of dvt and post operative thromboembolism improve blood flow and microcirculation in threatened vascular gangrene um okay and it it cause it can cause problem with the blood grouping okay so this is the most uh used i think in back in pakistan am i right hemaxel so it has a polymer of degraded uh, degraded uh, gelatin with electrolytes because since 11 years actually i have never used um, uh, this gelafundin so i actually i have forgotten uh, has anyone uh, face any problems related to gelatin in this hemaxel no sir sir it's the same like gelafuzine right yes so it so is yes we observe the ones anaphylactic hyper, reaction in the theater yes, anaphylactic reaction can occur okay and uh, does not but it is advantage that it does not interfere with coagulation so it is better than dextran if you are using in the resuscitation for example if you want to give it gelafundin is better and he sterile is the hypersensitivity reaction also less uh, incidence with gelafuzin i think it is less with the starch let us see here the starch is non antigenic glorious for okay so it is you, if you can uh, rate best is albumin number 2 is he sterile the number 3 is gelafundin this uh, uh, he, he, this uh, gelatin and then dextran so if you can number it uh, this is how you can just label okay because it is non antigenic does not interfere with blood grouping greater plasma volume expansion preserved inter uh, intestinal micro uh, vascular perfusion in endotoxemia this is actually related to others as well it should be okay advantage a disadvantage increase in serum amylase concentration up to 5 days after discontinuation this is something new i i have never heard, read about it affects coagulation by prolonging pt t pt and bleeding time by lowering fibrinogen decrease platelet aggregation is also causing okay so uh, uh, with with this uh, reference i if you we we can discuss few points about in special uh, scenarios fluid management like uh, if if anyone can recall the fluid management in burn parkland formula what will what is that formula so uh, four into body weight into percentage of burn will be the total fluid requirement for first 24 hours will give half of it in first 8 hours and the rest half in 4 ml hours. per percent burn per kg kg so for example if you have 10 and 10 for for example 100, 100 i just take it as just to make it simple 100 kg 
so 10 percent uh, burn okay so it is four liters so in first eight hours you will give two liters sorry and two liter in next next 16 hours and two liters in next 16 hours okay uh, what is the role of uh, colloids in burn yes sir albumin is also used to in to it is also used to give patients of burn and it has also got some formula uh, let me check so that is uh, that is uh, that is not the uh, actually my point is so that should be plasma used. expansion no no it should be used Edema, it, yes yes it that is be, the point it will because, yeah because it takes away all the actually all the water and uh, it will decrease the edema. No, no. Uh, it's not like that. Should we give colloids in initial resuscitation or no? In burn? No, no. In initial, no. Why? So half can be given as collide because there was one formula which was giving half in collide and half in... Uh, yes, albumin. Yes, it is written. Yes, I have also read. So, so actually, there is another formula there is, there, is more, there is more leaky capillaries, so it is better to give crystalloids. And then next uh, 24 hours, you can give. That's what I remember, if I'm not wrong. Sicolloids are not actually proteins that will take away the water? No. So... Not, so not not leak all. out of the vessel. Not all of them. remain in the intravascular compartment for eight to ten hours. Actually, the the point is that if you have too much leaky capillaries and edema, so actually that colloid will be lost. So that there, there will the advantage for which you are giving it will not be there. So it's not like that contraindicated to give colloids, but it is better to give crystalloids. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Okay. So. What about fluid management in liver disease? Which which fluid you should give? Can we give ringer lactate? Yes, Can we give uh, should we give ringer lactate in liver disease? Plasma light. Ringer lactate is not, Why not? because now lactate prop can create problem. Okay. So plasma light is a better solution. It does not have lactate. And maybe because this patient tends to have more chances of uh, hypoglycemia. So 5% dextrose water may be used, uh, dextrose saline. What are the other problems here? Because it's nothing is perfect. Because uh, the, uh, the, uh, the what, what are the usual electrolyte imbalance in liver disease? There is decreased sodium. Hmm? What else, please? Hypokalemia. Hypokalemia, why? Because there's an increase in insulin. No. Oh, this is not the correct. Uh, it is mediated by aldosterone because there is uh, increase in aldosterone levels. But uh, insulin, you are right, but insulin is uh, doing the intercompartmental shift. Okay. Insulin metabolism is slowed, but this is not the reason for hypokalemia in uh, why you are uh, we are talking that aldosterone levels are high but why there is sodium hyponatremia so because of the increased uh, fluid in the body so it is dilutional okay so <clears throat> so like total sodium does not decrease okay 
then uh, uh, there what about calcium is there any thing related to calcium what is the effect on calcium Remember, sorry don't remember sir uh, ionized calcium is more uh, sorry or no is it uh, calcium level related to albumin or no i forgot actually myself that what is the exact effect of uh, we uh, Bilal might help us. Yes, Bilal, please. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikum assalam. Bilal, just a uh, uh, few words. Okay. Yes, sir. Are Urdu speaker? Are you? No, 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 no. All English, English, English only. Ah. Uh, so from from where we we should start. Right from this question, uh, yes, hypocalcemia. Yes, uh, calcium because a uh, yeah. uh, problem. So of, if, uh, if we yes. talk about the calcium levels, uh, first of all, we need to know that is it ionized calcium is more important or uh, unionized is more important. Anyone has got an idea about that? That when when we give calcium chloride or calcium gluconate, what we are aiming for. We are trying to pull up ionized one or unionized one. And secondly, ionized. we talk about ionized. Okay. So probably uh, cal ionized calcium is uh, directly related to albumin levels. And uh, in chronic liver disease, uh, I, I don't remember exactly the formula, but correlation is that if there is a drop in one gram albumin at serum level the potassium uh, calcium drops by 0.8 so if if you are bilal, not this correcting is, uh, bilal sorry this is 0.8 is milligram or what one gram decrease in albumin one, one gram per deciliter right or 10 milligram per deciliter. One gram per liter or 10 milligram per deciliter is albumin. If it drops by this level, calcium drops by 0.8 millimoles per liter. Yes. Millimole per liter. Okay. Yeah. So if you are not correcting albumin, logically there, there is no point to correct calcium if there are no EKG changes or no hemodynamic instabilities. It, it, it's for stable patient. But in case of uh, if you are doing some transplant surgeries in uh, chronic liver disease patient or even non-transplant surgery, you will see a lot of people that they, they will try to pull up the calcium. Right, but usually the physician who are working in liver unit, they aim to pull albumin first up. So th there are two preparation of albumin, uh, which are commonly available. One is 5% and one is 20%. So if, what is the understanding of you people about this person? If let's say uh, someone's, asked to give a bolus of albumin by one gram per kilo and you have 20 percent albumin so how many mils you are going to push it will be 200 gram per ml no let's say 70 kilo patient right what is your understanding of in pharmacopoeia about this percentage when I say 5%, what, what does it mean? When I say 20%, what does it mean? It's that there is 5 grams per 100 ml of solution. No, one liter. Per 100 ml. You just divide or multiply with the 10 and it is... No, no, no. Hello? Yes. 
Five percent means five hundred five gram per hundred ml. No. Liter, liter. Hundred ml. Who is saying liter? I am saying five percent means five five gram in one liter or one thousand ml. No. Yes. Are you sure? Yes. I am sure that it's five gram per hundred ml. No, it's five okay. gram per. Per thousand, not hundred. Then it's not percentage. It's you actually see, in pharmacopoeia. This is universal rule. The, the person I don't know him, who is saying per hundred ml, he's right. So if they say five percent, it means five gram per hundred ml. If you say twenty percent, it means twenty gram per hundred ml. Yeah, Bilal, Propofol is one person, right? No, what we when we actually I uh, uh, we usually we make it by in ml. Uh, so let me just five thousand by hundred. No, five percent means no. The yes, 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 is very right. simple. Yes, 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 right. It is hundred. If yes, five percent, right. five gram in one hundred ml. If twenty percent, it's twenty gram in one hundred ml. Okay. So. Hmm. Because I used to tell in uh, mls, not uh, hundred. So that's no, that is confusing. Then you will go into calculation. It's very simple, easy, straightforward. So, in setting of liver disease, if albumin is low, it's understood that calcium is low. So, if it's a stable patient, as outpatient, you are looking at the patient. There is no need to correct anything. Yes, of course, intraoperatively. You, you can correct it, but real way is that just load that patient with albumin first and then look at blood gas. If calcium is low, just correct it. So there, there are two preparations available, calcium gluconate and calcium chloride. But usually we, we are using calcium chloride, uh, you know, more frequently in, in liver unit. Is it clear with that? Uh, Yes, everyone calcium, uh, if calcium chloride is three times yes so, then calcium some people say three times some people say two times so uh, some people use calcium chloride in the form of bolus they give like uh, straightforward bolus 10 milligram uh, per kg even some people go higher with 20 uh, milligram per kg, especially if there are frequent transfusions going on because citrate is trying to bind with calcium and it drops again. And secondly, some people run infusion like 10 milligram per kg per hour and they, they just titrate it according to blood gas analysis. And second, people were talking about frucimide in setting of pulmonary edema. What is your basic understanding that this last six, what, how you, especially you have seen that in colorectal, sur colorectal surgeries, when they are doing an ostomosis and if you overfill the patient, they will say, we, we are gonna do an ostomos, give some LASIX. Or sometime in case of pulmonary edema, even on cardiac floor or in theater, they, they, they are giving LASIX. So what are different mechanism of actions and which action is more acute will which help you guys really uh, during perioperative settings it's a loop diuretic you only know that it affects on the profanely okay is it a venodilator? No idea. Is it a arteriodilator? Arteriodilator. Venodilator or not? You can Google with me even if someone is sitting on some fast working machine, you can Google it. So main, X, no doubt it acts, on, it acts on loop of Henle, one sodium and uh, two potassium, one chloride co-transporters. It blocks there in uh, loop of Henle. 
Secondly, it's a venodilator and overall it dilates all vessels. So main uh, acute effect comes with this, uh, uh, with this vessel dilatation and venous return drops immediately and the tissue edema goes down. That loop of Henle um, is the main mechanism of action, but it takes some time to, to uh, provide its effect. So most of the people are not aware of it. Intraoperatively, when you give some shot, okay, fluid will come out only when patient is going to pour out urine, right? And urine, it not, sometimes it's not coming immediately. So immediate effect comes via vessel dilatation and there is a decrease in venous return and pulmonary edema and this all gets settled. Okay, so this is a main mechanism of action of uh, this LASIX, especially in acute uh, perioperative settings. If anyone among you have any concerns, we can discuss on it. Can you summarize it again, the mechanism? Venus. One mechanism of action, it's a loop diuretics, right? On loop of Hanley, there is co-transport uh, receptor, right? Sodium, potassium, and chloride. It blocks them. Secondly, it decreases venous return by dilating, mainly dilating veins and some partial effect on arterioles as well. So when veins and arterioles are dilated, right? So venous return drops. When venous return drops, right side of heart filling is relatively reduced and it reduces pulmonary edema. So it's gonna draw, uh, decrease blood pressure also. It can drop blood pressure, but some I have seen very few patients that it drops blood pressure. You you cannot use this drug solely for uh, uh, hypertension oh, or course. anti hypertensive. Okay. Yes, Bilal, and second, uh, uh, my question. Hello. Yes, 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 please. No, it, so this point is clear or still we need to discuss on it? Or should we move no, no, on? Think, yes, yes, move on. Uh, uh, Bilal, uh, next point you were saying, then I will ask you one thing and then we will finish. What you were saying? No, no you can ask. What Dr. was Bilal? that? Bilal, yes, uh, you were telling about the, the, the gut edema. To reduce gut edema will give furosemide. So the faster mm. action would be through the sodium potassium co-transporter or through no, the venodilation. 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 Yes, you you can read uh, if you read this through some idea in detail. Even there are one or two more you know action sites where it works, but I cannot tell you uh, right now because. Uh, I have a very limited brain capacity, so I cannot memorize every point at uh, any time. So secondly, uh, why this CLD patient has a delusional hyponatremia? What's happening actually? What is basic understanding? Why? Due to hypocratinemia. Sorry? Due to loss of proteins. That can be a reason. But what happens? The fillet shift. What, what is your understanding of hyperdynamic circulation? Yes. So hyperdynamic circulation, if you're talking about sepsis, there is the no, 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 I'm, I'm not uh, general, general. There are a lot of uh, medical condition when uh, circulation becomes hyperdynamic. What is your ba basic understanding? What's going on? What happens to cardiovascular system? 
in hyperdynamic circulation, isn't it that the blood flow is diverted from the non-essential organs towards the essential organs? No. Hyperdynamic means that uh, every parameter is uh, overworking, like heart rate is increasing. Uh, actually, in hyperdynamic circulation, what happens? There, there is a generalized vasodilatation. And uh, due to that vasodilatation, the more plasma and fluid volume, I'm talking about the intravascular volume, stays in the vessels. And it's, it is not going appropriately back to right side of heart. So heart is getting less volume. And how heart is trying to compensate, heart is trying to increase the heart rate just to maintain cardiac output. So, so that is a general and simple picture of hyperdynamic circulation. And what happens in uh, the chronic liver disease patients, they have this regulation of uh, hormone metabolism. Like the, there is a impaired metabolism of all uh, uh, these uh, uh, stress hormones, insulin, and generalized there is increased production of nitric oxide uh, at, in vascular endothelium, right? So due to that, nitric oxide, there is a pooling of fluid in the vessels. So vasodilatation is there, and especially in splanchnic circulation. So what happens there? And secondly, somebody told that hypoalbuminemia also. So when albumin also drops, the uncritic pressure is also less. So it <laughs> adds an additive effect. So what happens? Kidneys are hypoperfused. So JG apparatus, uh, sense this change and it sends message to renin and angiotensin system and that all vicious circle starts and kidney thinks that vital organs are being you know underperfused so kidney tries to compensate in the form of uh, you know uh, reabsorption of more fluid which dr sean was telling it's a delusional hyponatremia. And when this vicious circle becomes more intense, patient develops renal failure also, and they call it hepatorenal syndrome. Hepatorenal syndrome is by definition, when we say this is hepatorenal syndrome, when patient is having decompensated liver disease and there is drop in kidney functions, and there is no specific reason that why kidney stops working. So we say it hepatorenal syndrome. So th this is the main mechanism. So hyperdynamic circulation, splanchnic vasodilatation, kidney sense that change that maybe it's under perfusion of organ, JG apparatus is activated and whole story starts from that point. Is it clear? Yes. Uh, this uh, this one also uh, Bilal uh, because Rengin it's uh, aldosterone effect will be yes so, yes yes so well, when you will read renal angiotensin system in detail so th this all th there are six pathways where it's working to get its output so you you can just review that and uh, so uh, up till this point we are clear right. Yes. Um, okay. So, so generally, why, why we give fluids intraoperatively? Why? When the patient was in two, have days, and then there are ongoing losses. Mm -hmm. loss. oh, no. If the patient you will make. Circu so maintain circulation. In, in general, we just give to give fluid to maintain or just to keep uh, generating cardiac output, right? So you will find a lot of people who who are you know behaving very obsessed regarding choice of IV fluids. But in general, if there is not a, a very extreme condition. And it's really mandatory that you have to be very picky regarding choice of IV fluids. 
then yes, you must consider. But otherwise, usually uh, Hartman solution or plasma light is fine. Even if it's not available, you are not left with any choice. You, you, you have to use normal saline as well. So generally, we give fluids to uh, keep generating a normal or required cardiac output. And uh, how you evaluate that your patient is underfilled or overfilled so uh, th there can be a clinical parameters there can be dynamic parameters if if you have any idea about that uh, bilal uh, sorry, how you I, will, I, I will i will sorry i will interrupt you uh, actually <clears throat> uh, i discussed some of the points and this is uh, because 